just marched down here this morning to serve arrest warrants on certain delegates that are attending the conference today for crimes against humanity. Ward Morehouse, director of POCLAD, a uh, program on corporations, law, and democracy, and one of his supporters attempted to walk through the police line in order to serve delegates with this citizen's arrest uh, for crimes against humanity, and they were arrested. Uh, we, this weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, we held a, a grand jury hearing to decide whether we had enough evidence to take Unical, Union Carbide, Shell, Gap, a few more uh, to, uh, to international court for crimes against humanity and in each one of the cases it was unanimous that yes there was enough evidence to try these and, and we would like to arrest the delegates here, the delegates of the countries responsible for crimes against humanity after the fact, fully well knowing what the corporations were doing in their country enslaving people, raping people, murdering people, um, and they knew full well what was going on in their company, in their country, because uh, both the government and the corporations were benefiting from this, this slavery, this enslavement of the Burmese people, um, and that's in the case of Union, uh, of um, Unical. Yesterday's grand jury hearing, where we heard evidence against First Union Carbide for a horrendous spill of MICs. I can't. I don't remember the whole name of that chemical, but cyanide is the end of that, and it's a very, very toxic element. And it was stored in 40 million gallon drums, several of those, on a hill overlooking a village in Bhopal, India. And on December 2nd and 3rd of 1988, I believe. Uh, there was a, a massive spill, and it, that's a gas that just, it's a gas, and it went everywhere over the town, and about 20,000 people were killed from that accident. Those were Indian people, and that's a crime against humanity. Those people were targeted because they were poor, because their country didn't, didn't do what the United States does and put up laws that, that protect the basic right to life, the basic right to breathe clean air and clean water and, and to live and not have chemicals spill into you and kill you, you know. And there's, there's devastating effects still happening. F 15 years later, people are still living with chronic diseases because of the accident. And the second trial that I, that I witnessed, I was a jury on that trial, was, um, was uh, Unical. Unical is in cooperation, in a partnership venture with the Burmese military dictatorship and Total, a French company. Uh, now, um, they, the Burmese military was charged with the task of finding labor to build a pipeline for, for a gas line in Burma. And what the military did, uh, this was a great economic plan, they went out and they rounded up the local Burmese people and forced them at gunpoint to work, all the while raping and beating their children and killing them and, and basically terrorizing them into submission. And it, it, it was very, very, very profitable for, profitable for Unical, yeah. as you might imagine, having free labor build first a railroad to build to go out to the site where the pipeline was going to be built, and then of course the giant miles long ditch uh, for the pipeline. Pipeline, and not only that, they had to clear uh, miles of forest to make way for that pipeline, as, as well as villages where thousands of people lived, and these were Karan people and uh, Marma villages, which are. Uh, it involved in an insurrection against their military dictatorship government. So they were specifically targeted because they, they disagreed with the military. Regardless of that fact, they were raped, forced into slavery, killed, and it's still going on. And that's where, that's where some of our gas comes from. So think about that, you know, when you're filling up your gas tank, and, and, most, and the gas m could very well have come from Unical, that it's only there as a result of slave labor. So thank the slaves for working their, with their lives so you can have gas to run your car. Now the law is supposed to serve us and so on. Well, when that system fails, it's up to us to speak our peace. We take some eternal vigilance for justice to prevail.
WTO says it doesn't matter if the people of the United States have demanded that their legislators ban the importation of shrimp from uh, countries that allow fishing methods that kill sea turtles instead of using the alternatives. The WTO says that profit has to come foremost, not democracy. The WTO says that killing labor union activists is okay, but f uh, forming um, protective barriers to say that uh, the importation of bananas that were uh, produced in countries where uh, labor union activists are routinely killed is an unfair barrier. Uh, the WTO is only interested in profit and it's really overturning any sense of democratic rule that's left. Where are you from? Seattle. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Chuck Willer from Corvallis, Oregon. Excellent. Why are you here, Chuck? I'm here to work on forest issues in the WTO, and we're concerned about private industrial forests being exploited even further from the uh, free logging agreement that the Clinton administration's trying to put through at this round. So are you actually involved in the WTO talks? Well, I'm not. As an NGO, yes. So what do you hope to um, see this week at the uh, WTO well, We conference? hope to see the free logging agreement uh, not uh, get signed, and uh, we hope the administration will respond to concerns from the environmental community. I recently got an email from the uh, 
Trade Office in the White House last night, we all did, uh, that signed a letter November 10th to the White House, and uh, we have to answer that and be part of the discussion this week to get the White House to back off of the free logging agreement, although there's strong forces out here, Weyerhaeuser and the other major corporate interests are pushing it. Expect the increased movement of finished product out of the United States into the Pacific Rim and then causing further pressure on the forest to supply raw material for uh, northwest plants and uh, west coast plants. We're also real concerned about the invasive species issue and the log importations, which uh, the scientific community almost unanimously uh, says something that has to be looked at much closer than the administration has looked at it so far. So have you been inside the WTO talks yet? I've been in the NGO center and I've been in the uh, convention center, but not today. So what's your feeling on what's going on on the inside? Well, it's an elite process with the governments uh, negotiating amongst themselves, so it's hard to get a handle on it. Uh, we try and interview and talk to the people we know in the process and uh, get feedback and coordinate with people on the street out here to respond at the right time based on how the uh, events unfold. Excellent. So what's your hope for this week here? Well, the hope is, is that no agreement is reached and everything is pushed forward into the next round and in the, in the, uh, during that period the environmental community and labor will work close at uh, getting the kinds of reforms and changes that are necessary. So if you could speak to Mike Moore, what would you say to him? I'd say he should talk to uh, Michael Moore and get straight on the issues, the <laughs> filmmaker. <laughs> My name is Barry Walson from Seattle. And why are you here? Uh, I'm an environmental biologist. I work for the state and uh, basically environmental regulations that are out there right now aren't at the international level aren't supporting uh, the preservation of endangered species, especially the sea turtle and other creatures um, as well. So what are you hoping to see happen this week in Seattle? Well, basically I'd like to see a situation where Clinton responds to the uh, concerns of these protesters here and basically force the, forces the WTO to be more responsive to uh, environmental regulations. So Clinton so far has said that these protests are reason enough that they should push the WTO faster and further. What would you say to Clinton if you could speak to him? If I could talk to Clinton right now, I'd like to say that, you know, please listen to the guy in the street and please listen to the concerns of these people and try to follow the spirit of the American people and not the letter of the WTO. What's your name? Where are you from? Horst Georgi from Chile, from Puerto Montt, the south of Chile. And did you come up here for the WTO? Yeah, that's right. And what did you come up here for? How does the WTO affect you? Uh, we, we are fighting uh, against a very bad uh, forest project. They want to cut all the for green forests of the south of Chile. And so we are fighting against it since one, and, uh, one year and a half. And we fear that WTO will make them stronger and so they will it will be easier to them to go on cutting the woods but we don't want that they go on cutting the woods we want to protect the forests and we want that the forests stay there and that our region in the south of Chile will be a, a touristic region and not an industrial region that's the reason why we are here Who's the they that are cutting the forest down Pardon? in Chile? Who are the they who are cutting the forest in Chile? It's uh, I don't. I the, the, the corporation cutting the forest. It's, who it's is Boise it? Cascade from Idaho, from the United States, <laughs> and uh, they 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 are cutting the woods and they want to cut the woods and to to, to make chips and to make pl plant planters OSB from them. And I think it's not very very uh, reasonable to to cut the nature woods, native woods, and to, to, to make tips from them. So how is the WTO involved in what goes on in Chile? Well, WTO is, is, uh, tries to, to uh, stronger its, its force about, uh, about, their, uh, about the, the, the economy, and so they will uh, uh, make, uh, have better chances to uh, fight against the, the NGOs because the laws will be uh, weakened. So what do you hope to see this week at the WTO? I hope to see this week that WTO uh, <laughs> gets away. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks. I'm Pat Rasmussen with American Lands Alliance out of Washington, D.C. But Rodolfo Montiel is in jail in Mexico now because he organized farmer ecologists 
to kick Boise Cascade out of Guerrero, Mexico. They went there in April of 95. They started cutting the forests and the farmers noticed that their spring water was going down and that they didn't have irrigation water. They got scared, so they tried to stop the logging. They organized in February of 1998. They organized, and by April of 98, they kicked Boise Cascade out by cutting off any, they didn't get any trees. The farmers said, no more trees. So a year later, uh, Rodolfo is in jail, and he was tortured with electric shock. And as soon as they got him in jail, Boise Cascade's former partners started logging again, and the community had to go stop them again. So there's an international campaign to get Rodolfo uh, out of jail. So what do you hope to see this week at the WTO battle in Seattle? We hope to s stop, stop the globalization of the timber trade, that we stop the global free logging agreement, because Boise Cascade is on the advisory committee to the U.S. Trade Representative. So they're just writing themselves a free check. We already know what they did in Mexico. We already know what they want to do in Chile. And now they're uh, in the uh, meetings with our U.S. Trade Representative trying to write themselves a free check elsewhere. So if you could speak to Mike Moore, the chairman of the WTO, what would you say to him? <laughs> <laughs> The WTO will not work. It's anti-democratic and we need to start over with a bottom-up citizen process. We Excellent. need citizen involvement. What's your name? Why are you here? My name is Sheridan Pauker. I'm with the As You Sow Foundation, and we represent shareholders who are concerned about environmental and social responsibility for corporations. So we represent Home Depot shareholders and Monsanto shareholders who are trying to change those corporations from within as stockholders, and we feel that the WTO can hurt our process of doing that. 
um, and I wanted to speak about this at the NGO day um, that they set up for us. So, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to go in there as an NGO, as an accredited NGO, and I've spent the time to be accredited. And I tried to get in, and I'm being sent on a wild goose chase. I was sent, you know, eight blocks out of my way when it was really raining, and then I got where they told me to go, and then they said, no, you got to go back this way. And all the cops are saying, oh, we don't know anything about it, you know, and they won't even radio into each other to um, correct the situation. So I'm just wanting to say that, you know, NGO day is, is really just window dressing and win NGOs aren't even allowed in there. And it wasn't just NGOs. Um, with me were people with press passes that they weren't allowing in either. So, so what would you say if you got in? If I got in, I would say that um, the WTO TO rules inhibit our ability to use market mechanisms such as stockholder pressure to change corporations that way. Um, the threats to getting to getting rid of eco-labeling as a uh, non-tariff barrier to trade um, would take away the incentive for corporations and logging companies to, to use more sustainable techniques. And um, we, we represent Home Depot shareholders who um, achieved a success along with protesters, you know, um, Rainforest Action Network and other groups. Um, in getting the company to say they would stop selling old growth wood. And one of the primary mechanisms for them to do that is to use sustainably harvested wood that's certified by the Forest Stewardship Council. And without eco-labeling schemes, if the WTO says that that's illegal, then there's no incentive for logging companies to change their practices because there's no consumer choice, there's no consumer right to know. Um, so, you know, we're, we're here to say that that's a huge problem and I would like to speak about that if I could get in there. Yeah. Thanks. My name is Anita Roddick and I'm from the United Kingdom. And you uh I'm the founder of the body shop. And so how Right. So, I mean, this for me is one of the most thrilling experiences of my life. This is history making. I mean, just to have a convergence of not just on a single issue like the Vietnam War or on an environmental issue, to have these people here and the NGOs representing three and a half billion people who are wanting a sort of a more better way of doing and a kinder, more just way of doing trade. None of these people are against trade. They're just against exploitation. And just now, though, there's an Indian farmer up there talking to American farmers. American farmers are now almost uh, an endangered species asking and pleading with the people to start uh, making our government change. So I'm probably one of the most only business person here challenging this but we know that you can do trade in a fair way and we know you can do it more equitably. And the other thing that people are really uptight about is the way that governments are giving away their sovereignty rights in, in view of what the corporations want. In England, you know, we are told not to su support small scale banana uh, cooperatives in the Windward Islands because Chiquita bananas, as perhaps you happen to have given $500,000 to your democratic campaign, is now in the focus. So I'm here protesting, I'm here giving up alternatives and help fund this uh, extraordinary time. So 
that your kids will say to you, Daddy, what did you do in Seattle? They will say that. <laughs> Okay. Gwen, what's your opinion? If you could say something to Michael Moore, what is it that you would say to him? You know, humanize, make humanize the world to trading. You know, trade can be human. It can actually produce enormous benefits. Business is so powerful now. It's more powerful than governments, and it has to have a moral sympathy. And the reality is, if you do not do this, this will not survive. Because you see here, there will be are already thousands of protesters. And as I said, they represent billions of people. And they're actually the vigilante consumers who are targeting, targeting, you know, easy targets like McDonald's, easy targets like uh, Gap, but they will be targeting major corporations to change, to bend the sort of arc of, of behavior into more social justice. So to survive, I think you've got to be more thoughtful. The body shop's enormous success, how much of that do you relate to your moral policy and your humanistic policy? Well, we've never had an advertising campaign worth a pinch of shit. I mean, it's just 10p, 30p or whatever. So the reality is that we've been focused entirely on the editorial on our editorial and our behavior. Like, I mean, this 